Colleen here from the Carolina Raptor Center. Thank you for tuning in to our avian home adventure. Today we're going to be hanging out with one of our turkey vultures who is not in the picture yet, but hopefully we can have him come down. Oh, right on cue. That was great. So we've done a couple of talks with some of our black vultures, but you know, we thought our all of our vulture videos that we've done would not be complete without our turkey vulture here because they are a very common vulture that you guys will probably see in your backyard. Um, so the most common vultures we have are of course the black vulture. You guys have seen them paint, you've seen them walk with us and just hanging out with us. Um, these guys are also a very common vulture to the United States. They are distinctly visible compared to the black vulture because of that bright red head. So turkey vulture came up with the name because they look a little bit like turkeys. Sometimes we're not so creative with our naming of birds, but um, it's really great for identifying them because that really does stand out. They don't always have that red head though. Um, when they're babies, it's actually like a purple tint or something. Um, when this guy was growing up, he actually was purple or like a lavender color and we nicknamed him purple um, for a little bit. That wasn't his real name. Um, but it was just kind of fun um, and a really cool thing to see his head colors change as he got older. Why do their head colors change? Why do they change? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think it might have something to do with their, um, their sexual reproduction. Um, somebody can um, get hop on and chat other staff members if I'm incorrect about that, but I believe that is why. Um, so whenever they're ready to be out on their own and um, have a nest of their own, so that coloration changes. It's really cool because we feel like they can actually show some expression with that coloration too. So sometimes when we would interpret them as being a little uncomfortable wanting to get away from something, they actually will like flush out their face. It'll turn really pale. Um, I'm not really sure why they do that, but then sometimes if they are feeling um, more confrontational or wanting to push another vulture off a carcass or um, sometimes you do see it with a couple of our guys who live in here, um, they will actually turn more red. So it's, it's just like a funny emotion that we would interpret on them. Whether they're actually feeling something or not, we don't know. But we do notice some differences in their behavior, um, different characteristics that happen. Why um, are his feet more white? Why are they more white? That's a great question. So believe it or not, that's not the color of his feet. Um, that is actually the color of vulture pee. Um, these guys have adapted to do something called urohydrosis. Um, it's a big word that means basically they pee on their legs. So that serves a few purposes. It allows them to cool down when it's really hot out. It also allows them to disinfect their feet. So you can think of it um, as hand sanitizer. So whereas we've been, you know, going into stores and looking for that precious hand sanitizer during this COVID-19 pandemic, he's constantly making it for himself. So he's got a, um, a great deal with that. Um, so yeah, that's a, that brings us to a really great topic is we usually think of vultures being really dirty. Um, and yeah, you would think vultures peeing on their legs, that doesn't sound too sanitary, but their, their stomach acid is so acidic that when it comes out of the other end, um, it kills any kind of bacteria, any kind of germs that might be on their feet. Um, and they have a couple of other things that keep them really clean. If you notice, he doesn't have feathers right on his head. So they actually have something called a hood, similar to when we're going outside, we have a jacket, it's raining, we put our hood up, it's cold, we put our hood up. Um, these guys can move a layer of feathers up and down. So when they're eating, um, he's not gonna do a great example of this because his hood has been down, but they would pull it down to keep any kind of guts and gross things from getting on their feathers. So it keeps them cleaner when they're eating and they're digging deep into that carcass. Um, they also do something called sunning, and it's something that you guys probably see them do on the side of the road, maybe on your house. I've seen them on houses doing this. They stretch their, stretch their wings really far apart and let the sun or the UV rays just hit them. So they can kill off any kind of bacteria and mites um, and really keep themselves really nice and clean. I want to try to get it a little bit closer, closer to show his nares. Oh, he says, I don't think so. I mean, they'll just squat down and you might be able to get in a little bit closer. I just want to show his nares. So he has this little bony protrusion here. Um, and inside of that are his nares where he can breathe. Um, it's thought that this little bone actually will keep food from getting into his nose when he's eating. Um, so it's hard to see um, their deep back in there. Hopefully Kate can get a nice little zoom on it. Maybe if I turn him. 
but you can I can we can literally see through his nares yeah. to the other yeah, side. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's also thought that it allows for more surface area. So um, not a lot of birds are known for their sense of smell. Um, these guys are. They are um, supposedly supposed to be able to smell better than bloodhounds who are known for searching for missing people. Um, these guys can fly around or perch somewhere and really sniff out the decaying carcasses that they're looking for. Um, our other vultures aren't necessarily that lucky, like our black vultures here, so they will follow these guys to a carcass and help them um, break it apart. So you'll see turkey vultures and black vultures together all the time. If they're soaring, how would you tell a turkey vulture apart from a black vulture? That is a great question. So we get that question all the time. Um, a really great indicator is their, the wing coloration underneath. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, yep. so he's spreading it a little bit. They have silver all underneath their wings. Um, so if you're lucky enough to be that close, that's a great way to tell them apart. Black vultures will only have silver or that white coloring under the first few um, feathers on the ends of their wings. Um, Jennifer asked, do the vultures at the Raptor Center enjoy interacting with their trainers? They seem friendlier. Yeah, um, so we don't really know what they enjoy. All we know is, um, you know, our relationships with them and whether they're willing to work or come up to us. I would interpret this as he does, um, you know, enjoy me coming in here. Um, he's getting all the food that he wants. Um, it's very enriching when we can train with our birds too and very stimulating for them. So um, they do seem to like to participate when we're training. Um, we build bonds with these guys. They definitely recognize some of us over other people and um, they learn from their consequences and their history with people. Oh yeah, let's see if we can get him. Um, what is his name? His name is Gordico. Um, but we call him Gory for short. We're going to see if we can get him. So one of the things we try to enrich with the birds is their perching. Oh, the sun is coming in. Um, so this type of perching is actually a swing. So they have a really tall perch up here. Again, the sun is coming in. So we have a really tall perch for him here. And then attached to the bottom of that is a swing perch. It just gives them a little extra um, something different. And we're going to see if we can get him to come over to it. He may this say. something we've ever worked on, so I'm not sure he understands what I want. So I might just place some food up there and hopefully he'll go up. Um, again, we haven't worked on training this behavior. But... <laughs> oh, he also might spun. Maybe? No. He's m oh, more there's... interested, I think, in my shoelace. And there's Leaf <laughs> coming through and he's like, hey, all the things. Oh! <laughs> so he does normally get on this. Um, I guess maybe not from that angle. Normally he's a little bit more graceful for that. So it is a swing and it does move. We'll just let him get on that on his own time. Um, so. He should a good shot of his wings. Um, at the Raptor Center, we like to um, equate social distancing to um, the length of a turkey vulture wing. We like to say, stay one turkey vulture length away from each other. Yep, so their wingspan is about six feet. Um, I think it's a little bit bigger than the black vultures. Oh, they got a little dark out here. <laughs> so I'm gonna get him a whole chicken. Hopefully he'll stay over here and he'll show you guys how he will pair up his food. Yeah, so their feet aren't as strong as our owls or eagles feet here, um, but they are really great for ripping up and standing on carcasses and tearing them up. So they're known more for their sharp beak um, than having feet that really grasp or grab onto things. So that those flat feet allow him to stand on um, a carcass and not worry about shifting off of it too much to be able to get into it really well and tear it up. And they'll typically just tear up their food and um, gobble it down, just like that. We have a question about how old he is. About how old he is? Um, I believe he's about five years old. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have a lot of birds here, so sometimes it can be hard to keep up with all that, but I'm almost positive he's about five. So um, he'll likely live to be um, hopefully in his 30s. Yep, he's, he's got a roommate um, who is 
32? Uh, something like that, yeah. She's, yeah. she's up there, which is pretty amazing. So they would live to be maybe about 15 max in the wild. Um, but when they are under our care here, um, they typically can double or sometimes even triple their lifespan. So you think about all the benefits, um, free food whenever they want. Looks like I might need to get him some more food. <laughs> um, free food whenever they want, um, free health care, which is super nice. So we do have a vet on staff and we do have um, a bird curator who's in charge of their health, uh, making sure that they're all um, getting their checkups for the year as well. How can you tell males and females apart? Um, that's a good question. So typically in the raptor world, the females are larger than the males. Um, they're about a third of the size larger, um, but that can vary too. So we do when we are um, taking a new bird in or um, training a bird for education, you know, we can have that in our mind of how to tell them apart. But really we do a blood test and send it off um, to a DNA lab and they're able to uh, give us that information. That's just the best way to do it. Uh, we've had a funny history of trying to guess what they are and then naming them a more male or female name um, and then finding out later that that is not you know that is not what they are um, so we have a female barred owl named Bob um, for example and so we've tried to be more stop. gender neutral yeah, with our names <laughs> either with our names um, or know exactly what they are before we name them oh what are you doing oh wow you got a little upset something scared him I feel like he might have seen his own shadow. I don't know. He was nibbling on my radio a little bit. Ah. He might want some more food, too. So, might go get him some more food. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, any of the questions that we didn't get to, uh, we will make sure to answer um, in the comments. Oh, Rosie, it's your guy. This is Gory. So, Rosie who just um, tuned in is the one who named Gordico. All right, thanks guys. Have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday.